Hi everyone, this is Jared Green, Wildlife Refuge Specialist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at the Lenape National Wildlife Refuge Complex. Today I'm out at the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge in New Jersey. We realize that during these times, not everyone is able to come out and enjoy the wildlife refuge. So we put together a tour of one of our trails so you can experience the refuge right from your own home. Have fun. I'd like to tell you about a short trail we have here at Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge. It leads past the pavilion and past our kiosk down to the Nature Detective Trail. The Nature Detective Trail has 11 spots on it to help us explore the refuge and special things that we have here. Come follow me to a couple of those spots. We have a beautiful winter day here to explore this nature detective trail. Our first stop is one that we call Made in the Shade. In the summertime, these trees will be covered with leaves. There are many plants that love to be in shaded, cooler areas. In the summertime, this area can be 15 degrees cooler than it is out in the full sun. One, one group of plants that loves to be here are ferns. Now most of our ferns have died back for the winter, but beautifully, the Christmas fern, of course, stays green all year long. Come spring, this dogwood tree will be in full bloom. And we have a very special plant over here, a jack in the pulpit that will come up and be in full bloom. Its leaves and its scape are gorgeous. At this corner of our trail, we have the barking area. No, it's not about dogs. In fact, dogs are not permitted on our trails here at Great Swamp National Wildlife because their presence and even the scent they leave disturbs the animals who make their home here. No, this is about the bark that is on trees, their outside covering. Some trees, like beech trees and ironwood have very smooth bark. Other trees have their bark is very rough. One of my favorite trees here at the refuge is the shagbark hickory. Just like its name suggests, it has very shaggy bark. In fact, in the summertime, bats tuck up under those shags and nap during the day before they come out at dusk to go catch mosquitoes. You can see here this shagbark hickory had a double trunk and recently a neighboring tree fell over during a storm and actually split the trunk. We're very hopeful that this tree survives because the nuts from the tree, I have a little bit, I have the shell of one here, are favorites from, for squirrels, but also, interestingly, for turkeys and deer. We often see signs in the summer that the turkeys have been here 
and taken a dust bath in our in our wood chip pan. This area of our trail is called Holes Sweet Holes, but that really means home sweet home. Many of the animals here at the refuge live in holes. The holes that are created in trees are used by birds, squirrels, raccoons, and others. Sometimes the holes are created when a branch breaks off of an older tree. Sometimes woodpeckers in pecking for bugs create a hole that then becomes a home either for protection during the winter time or for raising young during the summer. When there's not enough natural holes available, birds and animals will use boxes provided for them. Here at the refuge, we have built and maintain boxes for wood ducks, bluebirds, tree swallows, and we have gourds for purple martins. The signs along our trail also help you know which senses to use when exploring this area. This sign, called Earth Music, helps us focus on the sounds around us. And so you see the symbols at the bottom tell you to look around and also to use your ears. Right now, I'm hearing a red-bellied woodpecker a nuthatch, and I can even hear the sounds from 287 that's a mile or so away. So you will think about which sounds you're hearing, which are natural, and which are man-made. Our final stop on today's tour is at a corner called Get Let's Get Nosy. That's because here, in addition to hearing and seeing and feeling, you get to smell things. Animals use their sense of smell to find water, to find food, and to find each other. One of the plants I'd like to introduce you to is this plant called Mountain Mint. At the bottom, the new leaves are actually starting for the year. If you rub the leaves between your fingers or even touch the old dead heads and smell it, it has a wonderful minty smell. In the spring and summer, the new growth and flowers will be covered with pollinating insects. Also, it's a little early, but by next month, in this area will be skunk cabbage. It's one of our first plants up because the first growth has chemicals in it that actually produce enough heat to let it come up through the ice and snow. But the leaves smell pretty bad and so most animals leave it alone. On the other side of our trail, come spring and then summer, our swamp rose will be in bloom and it has a wonderful scent. So in this area, you can use your nose as well as all of your other senses. Oh, no.
National Wildlife Refuge any time of the year to find out the exciting things that are happening 